This is Amhara Media Corporation Hebrew Channel, and you are watching our third step of their life from Bahardar, Ethiopia, and I am Fikrat Dizotu. Stay tuned. The Paron Trading PLC has signed an agreement with the Industrial Parks Development Corporation to start agro processing investment in Bahardar Industrial Park. Let's get more from the report. During the signing ceremony, Industrial Parks Development Cooperation CEO Aklilu Tadese said the agreement enables Paron Trading to start agro processing investment in Bahardar Industrial Park. The CEO stated that the corporation will provide all the necessary support to Paron Trading in collaboration with the pertinent actors. Aklilu added that the agreement signed between the two parties demonstrates the corporation's commitment to encourage domestic companies and investors to engage in industry industrial parks in Ethiopia. The CEO stated that Bahardar Industrial Park is one of the Ethiopia's 13 industrial parks open for domestic and foreign investors. Paron Trading CEO Shifara Solomon thanked the corporation's commitment to supporting domestic companies and investors to invest in industrial parks. It was learned that the trading company, which is expected to contribute to the import substitution efforts of the country upon going operational, will create 1,000 jobs. Paron will supply value-added and processed agricultural inputs for food and drink industries. The International Labour Organization said it will organize a platform for dialogue on promoting decent job for African migrant workers in the Middle East in the early months of the upcoming year. Let's get more from Brahan Organa. Speaking to Ethiopian News Agency, International Labour Organization Country Office Director Alex Somusendo said, many migrant workers are often found in temporary unprotected jobs which makes them vulnerable to decent work deficits. He added, mainly women are overrepresented in caring domestic work where they are vulnerable to abuse and exploitation in the destination of Middle East countries like Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates and Qatar. Almost all Igad countries have millions of workers as legal and illegal migrants working in the Gulf states. And some of them have got very poor working conditions. Some of them are doing relatively well. In this regard, Musindo revealed International Labour Organization is trying to provide a platform for dialogue in the near future between the African countries and Gulf states in the early months of the upcoming year. Of course, globally, ILO using its various uh, tools and so on. It's also to try and provide that platform for dialogue. I might conclude by saying on the dialogue side, we are not only looking at the power of one country, but looking at the power of the continent for Africa. So next year we are looking at possibilities for an Africa Gulf States dialogue on promoting safe orderly migration. So that part of what you are raising is the pressure side of it is also handled at continental level with Africa coming together. According to him, this dialogue is vital to end the suffering of migrant workers and create decent job for them in the countries of destination. Asked about the abuse Ethiopian workers have been experiencing recently, the director said International Labour Organization is working to ensure Ethiopian workers' rights in the destination countries with its global standards. Musendo stated Ethiopia has a large number of legal and illegal migrant workers in the Gulf states and International Labour Organization will make all available resources to protect the rights of those workers. This would include a wide range of measures and effective coordination between countries of origin and destination. He added, International Labour Organization is also supporting participation of trade unions from Ethiopia to work with trade unions for countries of destination in Middle East countries to protect the country's migrant workers. And recently we have supported trade unions from Ethiopia to work with trade unions in the receiving countries, the destination countries, so that the two trade unions can also pressurize the authorities in ensuring that all workers are the same, whether migrant or local. So we are also using the path of trade union pressure and trade union support to that effect. We are also working with recruitment agencies to ensure that recruitment agencies are guided by the ILO standards. They prepare people before they leave.
And when people are in the destination country, there is a follow-up mechanism that is there. So we are trying to work with the government of Ethiopia around creating a database where you get to know who has migrated, where and where are they working. The director elaborated the recruitment agencies prepare workers before they leave and when people in the destination country with their follow-up mechanisms. The director also called on the Ethiopian government to have a critical database about Ethiopian migrant workers. With such knowledge, it will be much easier to track and support. Reports show that the increasing migration flows to the Middle East is becoming an important source of foreign currency for the IGAD member states. Middle East countries have become important countries of destination for migrant workers from the African countries, most importantly from the IGAD region. According to Minister of Education, some 10 first-generation universities will become autonomous in the next two years. Ababa Brahane will give us the data. Administration and Basic Affairs Chief Executive Officer at the Ministry, Solomon Abraha told Ethiopian News Agency that the changes are being made based on the roadmap set to maintain the quality of education. He added that making universities autonomous is one of the activities of the reform for which operational systems, legal frameworks, rules and guidelines are prepared. The chief executive officer revealed that Addis Ababa University will be autonomous in a few months and that would enable it to create the capacity to properly carry out its mission and quality education as well as research work. The university was chosen as the first to become autonomous in views of its current capacity and educational programs. In the next two years, 10 universities, including Addis Ababa University, which have been given a research mission and identified as the first generation, would be autonomous. Moreover, Solomon pointed out that being autonomous does not mean that the universities would never administer the institution of higher learning. It means they would fulfill their missions with accountability and responsibility. Addis Ababa University President Professor Taso Waldahanna said, Autonomy will allow the university to carry out its mission to solve the country's political, economic and social issues. The professor stated that being autonomous will give them the opportunity to strengthen their capabilities and do better work. It is also important to improve the quality of education. Furthermore, Professor Tasso said it creates an opportunity for the university to establish research and community services successfully and in an effective and cost-effective manner. Financial, human resource recruitment, asset management and labor management laws will be introduced when the university becomes independent. Ethiopian Airlines Group CEO Ms. Fentaso said that Ethiopian Airlines is undertaking preparations to resume regular flights services to the Tigray region. Mordo Mulie will give us the detail. Ethiopian Airlines Group Chief Executive Officer talking to Ethiopian news agency on the attained achievements in Vision 2035 indicated that following the peace agreement signed between the government of Ethiopia and TPLF, Ethiopia is making preparations to resume flights to Tigray region. So, Chachin at Lekan Airport on Nasta Ganalem, Slezik Berarala Majemar, Yetazagajeno. We will send our people to the area and repair the airport. Hence, we have been preparing to commence flight to the region. In addition to the three airports, we are also working to resume service to other airports like Lalivela. In the Lalivela, I have been able to get to the airport for the tourists. I have been able to get to the Lalivela for the tourists. I have been able to get to the airport for the tourists. He added that the resumption of flight to Tigray is expected to play a great role in expediting humanitarian aid delivery to the region. There were daily flights to the area, but it was halted due to the conflict. Tigray is among the regions that Ethiopian flies. He stated, adding that the resumption of flights will have multifaceted benefits. He added that Ethiopian Airlines' resumption of flight following the agreement reached will accelerate humanitarian delivery. 
የበለጠ የሰዎች እና የጭነት እንቅስቃሴ ይኖራል ብለን እናስባለን there will be need of passengers and cargo services in connection with the humanitarian aid delivery various foreign organizations are expected to provide humanitarian aid and we are prepared to provide these services and waiting for that too ብዙ የውጭ ድርጅቶች እርዳታ መስጠታቸው አይቀርም እኛም ያንን አገልግሎት ለመስጠት ተዘጋይተናል እየተጠበቀም ያለ According to him Nepal and Shira airports are in condition to resume flights while the Aksum airport that was damaged during the conflict requires maintenance Chief Executive Officer Masfan noted that the preparations to resume flight will further accelerate the needed humanitarian delivery to the region This is Amhara Media Corporation Haber Channel and you are watching our Thursday update proceeding to news beyond borders. Africa leaders have declared a ceasefire in the Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo starting on Friday, which is aimed in particular at stopping attacks by the M23 rebel group. The declaration was issued by the leaders of Democratic Republic of Congo, Rwanda, Burundi and Angola and former Kenyan President Uhuru Kenyatta. After a summit in Luanda on Wednesday aimed at finding solutions to the East Democratic Republic of Congo crisis, Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo is facing an insurgency by the M23, a Tutsi-led rebels group that the Democratic Republic of Congo government claims is supported by neighboring Rwanda. Rwanda denies this, but the M23's resurgence resurgence this year has caused a major diplomatic crisis in addition to the ceasefire the statement said the m23 must withdraw from its occupied terrorists or face intervention by regional forces as trt world reported China and Kenya have deepened mutual political trust and expanded cooperation over the years, pushing their relations to the level of the Comprehensive Strategic Cooperative Partnership. In an exclusive interview with CGTN, Kenya's former Foreign Minister Rafael Tuju hailed China's accomplishment under the Communist Party of China's leadership. He said he thinks that was the most excellent news because it ensures stability in China. It also means that the same policies that have been followed in the last 10 years will continue and those policies are good for the rest of the world. Huge infrastructural projects in Kenya and the larger East and Central Africa also showcases China's support to make greater contributions to world development and prosperity. The fruitful and wide-ranging cooperation between China and Kenya has yielded to win-win results setting out a model for the China-Africa cooperation as CGT and Africa reported. Acting Executive Secretary of the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa, Antonio Pedro, said Africa's sustainable transformation requires sustainable industrialization that can withstand global challenges. Let's get more from the report. The United Nations Economic Commission for Africa chief made the remarks on the occasion of Africa Industrialization Day, which is commemorated every year on November 20 in line with Africa's leaders' decision back in 1989. A United Nations Economic Commission for Africa statement quoted Pedro as saying the Russia-Ukraine crisis they are in and the devastating COVID-19 pandemic they are recovering from have cruelly reconfirmed the accuracy of their diagnosis and prescription, but also the yawning gap between their lofty ambitions and, and their paltry performance in this crucial field. He emphasized that industrialization is critical for Africa as primary products, both extractive or agricultural, account for the bulk of African exports to the rest of the world while processed products dominate the continent's imports. 
Pedro said in far too many cases they export the raw product and re-import the same thing in processed form, thereby exporting African jobs to others and effectively paying for the wages of foreign workers. Figures from the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa shows that between 2016 and 2021, fuels accounted for the largest share of Africa's total exports, ranging from 29 to 40 C percent in any given year and averaging 37 percent over the period. At a more granular level, petroleum and petroleum-related products comprise the largest percentage. Pedro said that industrialization is not an option for Africa. It is an imperative. He said simply by adding value to their raw materials in the continent, they can convert their resources to the real blessings they are rather than allow them to continue to be a curse imposed on them. This is Amhara Media Corporation Haber Channel and you are watching our daily news. Now let's see the foreign currency exchange rate of the day. For today, I am Fakrat Dizodo and you are watching our daily update live from Baharda, Ethiopia. Good man, have a nice time.